I want to talk to you about ideas. Ideas are a new currency. They're valuable. Um, when I grew up as a child in Greece, I remember the word patedda. It was used quite often, actually, to, um, to show ingenuity, to, to talk about the workarounds that the previous gentleman also talked about. It was used to solve problems. And I still love that. I think Greece, the Greek people, are, are very, very creative. I think they have a lot of ideas. I want to propose a new way of thinking about those ideas to you this evening. Two gentlemen, you might recognize them, Thomas Edison and Henry Ford. They've actually changed the world we live in. Ideas, a lot of people think, are actually a eureka moment, something that happens, a burst of inspiration, something that comes to you when you're asleep and you wake up and you're energized and you know, you're going to go do something different. In reality, most really good ideas that make it out and impact people, impact the world, make it a better place, are deliberate. Thomas Edison ran a lab. In his lab worked Henry Ford, as his chief scientist. You'll see the vehicle, and you'll see the light bulb. Both of these gentlemen actually had a lot to do with both, obviously. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, and that created a problem. The kerosene that was used to light the homes of the 1800s was no longer needed, and that actually caused a major glut of kerosene on the market. So Henry Ford's job was to figure out what to do with all this kerosene. So he thought, okay, hey, let's turn it into gasoline, and let's use it to power the internal combustion engine that we use in cars. So you see, both of those ideas and these two gentlemen actually have impacted the world for the following century. The gasoline that Henry Ford was formulating ended up powering Ford to the company it is today. It's a big theme. This is not a sexist statement. It's just there's two guys in a garage theme, two guys in the lab. I wish there were more women participating. I encourage you. The two guys here were uh, Packard, uh, HP, Hewlett and Packard, in the front of the garage in California. You might recognize the other two guys. I used to work for one of them, Allen and Gates. And you might recognize these other two guys. Anyone recognize them? OK, I'll call them the twins. Um, so these are two guys, but maybe there were three. The point is, we're not really sure. Um, but that's not for me to figure out. I just thought it was a fun thing to say. Um, each of these people had an idea. They had a mission. They had a set of ideas that turned out to be businesses based on technology. The great part about it is that the, the, the value of the idea is increasing. It's actually incredible what's happening, particularly in the last few years, and even, frankly, in the last three or four months. Each of these businesses got to $50 billion of market capitalization in those years. 59 years, 19 years, and a staggering only six years to $50 billion of market cap. What does that tell you? Ideas are the currency of the future. They're the currency of the 21st century. Ideas, that's an LED light bulb. It's the new idea. It's actually going to revolutionize the way we light just like Thomas Edison did, our homes. And there's a shield. And an idea is only as good for me, anyway, from an economic perspective, as good as its protection. That's called a patent or a patent. It goes back to the Greeks, doesn't it? Light bulbs are great ideas. They, you know, they inspire people. Ideas now have a couple of modes of, of going down a path. Traditionally, what you would do is you would build the technology from an idea you would create a business strategy. You would hire employees, people to work in your great new company. You would invest in buildings, acquire customers, build supply chains. And that's a great way to build value, to build economic value, to build social value. It's a really good thing to do. And it works. It works great. The problem is it requires some time, and it requires a lot of capital. And if you have both, excellent. But as an inventor, if you don't want to go down that path, but are really prolific and you have some great ideas, now there's a new opportunity. And that new opportunity, frankly, is just to sell or license your idea. It lowers the barrier to entry in the idea space tremendously. The cost of an EU patent, I think, right now, is to be 30,000 30, euros or so. It's dropped about 90% in cost. People recognize that you don't cut your way into growth, like we're experiencing a little bit in Greece, 
that you have to innovate and you have to invent your way out of it, where we are today. So what's interesting about this is inventors today with valuable ideas have a couple of paths that in the past didn't exist. And that is because invention capital is a new thing. It is being thought of and being valued very differently than the past. This is my neighbor. This is not really a picture of my neighbor. I'll call him Bob. But this is a great story. Bob is basically a scientist. And he basically invented an algorithm, something like that. But here's the best part of the story. He's a single individual without a company, and he sold an algorithm, we'll call it that, for $20 million. I'm still trying to figure out why Bob, it's not his real name, needs a couple of Lamborghinis and a Rolls Royce to pick up eggs at the supermarket. I still can't quite figure it out. The point is, there's a play, there's an opportunity here for an individual without a ton of money, without a big company, to still take a valuable idea that solves issues for people, identifies opportunities, creates value, and now he can actually participate in this new invention economy that we're experiencing. Let's take a different example. I want to illustrate three of them. This is Nortel. This is not really Nortel, but this is the story of Nortel. The story of Nortel is that for a long time, Nortel was the pride and joy of Canada. It had a market capitalization of $250 billion at one point. Unfortunately, Nortel fell on hard times. It's a very competitive industry. And the board of directors of the company decided that they're going to sell the company off. They're basically going to liquidate the company. So what traditionally people associate with a hugely successful company are buildings. You look at the office tower and you say, wow, what a beautiful building. And then you hear, oh, they have 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people working there. And you go, boy, that's a big, successful company. And then you think about it, and they say they have fleets of delivery cars, or they have, you know, I don't know, huge customer lists and so forth. It turns out all that was only worth $2.8 billion. Now, from a market cap of 250, that's not a lot of money, but that's the way business goes. And then about a year or two later, the board, same board, decided that they actually wanted to sell the intellectual property of Nortel. And they decided to hold an auction. The intellectual property, the stack of patents, if you will, was sold for $4.5 billion at auction. Highly competitive, unprecedented. This happened only four months ago. This is why I think what's happening is very, very germane to some of the conversations we're having here. If you do the math, that's $725,000 per patent. It's actually quite incredible. So if somebody were to say to me, our idea is valuable, can you monetize them? Are they useful to the economy, to companies, to the market? I would say the numbers show that they're incredibly valuable, and invention is a great way to participate. Let's take another deal that has just happened since then. This is only two months ago. Google is a strategic acquirer of intellectual property, different than the other two cases. Google made a bid for a Motorola Mobile for $12.5 billion. That sounds like a lot of money. So I did some back of the envelope math, and I'm trying to prove out what I'm thinking is happening here, which is invention capital is just becoming this new currency. And I did some quick math, and I think, it's just my envelope math, it's about $2 billion worth of hard assets, tangible assets that normally you would think are the value and the crown jewels of a company. That only leaves about $10 billion for intellectual property. So if you look at this trend and you believe in the numbers, then you have to start thinking there's a huge opportunity here for all the way from a small individual, small scale individual inventor, all the way to large corporations to participate in this new venture capital space. So I've been thinking a lot about, you know, what are inventions? I mean, do they, you know, do they really add value? Can I come up with a couple of interesting ideas to explain to you? So I came up with barbed wire. Barbed wire was actually patented in 1868. It was a series of nine patents, and it changed the American West. Before that, people had all kinds of feuds and problems with cows jumping over in other people's land, you know, running, you know, running away. They used to get shot by cattle rustlers, you know, stolen, sold, and so forth. It was quite interesting. This little invention, barbed wire, transformed the American West and many other parts of the world. And it has lasted, what, almost 150 years? If you think about how simple that is, you know, that has actually changed the world that we live in. 
simple little wire with some barbs on it. But that's interesting. But what's been happening lately that's sort of impressive? So I, I've been looking, and in Africa, it turns out, and in the developing world in general, it turns out that about four million infants die before they reach one month old. One of the tools for keeping them alive in the developing world are incubators. You know, baby incubators, I'm sure you've seen them in hospitals. What's interesting is they're very sophisticated and they break. And when they break, you need real skill to fix them. You need parts, you need service know-how and so forth. It just doesn't exist in the market. So what this one person had this great idea, he said, well, what do they know how to fix in the developing world? And someone said, they know how to fix cars. They know how to fix engines. They know how to fix things around, you know, motorized vehicles and so forth. So what they actually did is they built an incubator, I don't know if you can see this, out of car parts. There's the two headlights that actually create the heat. And there's other car parts there. This is a patent pending idea and is now actually in use in the developing world saving babies. So ideas can really, you know, have a broad spectrum of both ingenuity, simplicity, and, um, and efficacy in terms of actually helping save people's lives. And those are actually the best ones. Because humanity needs a lot of invention. I think now, more than ever, the human race needs to get really creative. Not because of the local issues that, that you're facing here in Greece, um, but because of the macro issues that we're facing as a, as a, as a society and as a planet. When you look around, you see all kinds of demands on energy, you have biohazards, you have an environmental contamination, you have waste problems, um, you know, health care is becoming very dauntingly expensive for governments. There's huge, huge problems that have lots of scale. So where I work at Intellectual Ventures, we've actually figured out a way, and we're working on this problem, to combine broad swaths of IP to address large global issues. We believe that invention capital is what needs to be deployed to solve some of the world's biggest opportunities and biggest challenges. So we're working with governments and we're working with companies because it turns out that one entity, either a multinational corporation or a government or intellectual ventures or one of anything, any type, can't solve these issues. It takes a team and it takes a cross-disciplinary approach. We call this innovation mega projects. We have a lab. Just like Thomas Edison, we, we learn from history, so we don't repeat the mistakes. We have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of space, and we have over 100 uh, scientists, including lots of PhDs, that invent on a daily basis. I wanted to share with you some of my favorite um, ideas and inventions that we've actually created recently. I mentioned the energy problem. You can call it the energy opportunity for the right solution. So we're actually building a brand new type of nuclear reactor. I think there's a mix of technologies that need to be deployed to solve our energy needs as a, as a planet. I think nuclear has a place there. So this nuclear reactor uses spent fuel from other reactors. Um, it's actually much safer. It's much easier to deploy. It has so many other benefits that we're very excited about it. This company is called TerraPower, and it is now spun out of our company, and it is out there operating as a single entity. It's very exciting because, unfortunately, our energy consumption is just increasing, not decreasing. We're just not very good at saving energy. About 250 million people a year die of malaria across the world. It's a serious problem. And one of the tools that we've discovered that we can utilize to fight malaria is what we call the photonic fence. And it's a series of technologies that uses a laser to shoot down uh, a mosquito. You see, mosquitoes carry malaria, and only female mosquitoes actually carry the disease. This laser has just shot down subject 5,642, and now it's been eradicated. So, so this, this tool itself is not going to solve malaria, but it takes open minds and brand new approaches to solving some of these daunting human problems that we're facing. It's a fun video. I hope you enjoyed it. The mosquito didn't. So this, this technology actually discerns between male and female, between mosquitoes and bees and flies and other insects. It's, it's, it has to do with the frequency of the wings, among other things. So I'm here to ask, I'm here to implore you, I'm here to encourage you to think about what can you invent. In a time like this, I think invention is needed more than ever. There are huge minds in this room. 
This society has invented its way out of a series of challenges in the past. So I ask, help yourselves, help our world, invent, come up with a great idea, and finally, you need to protect it in order to get the most out of it. So I ask, what is your idea? Thank you.